Uh, you guys give me one second. I'm having some problems with the uh, Facebook piece. All right, so it doesn't look like uh, Facebook is going to cooperate, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Uh, can everybody hear me? I yes, yes, we hear. Mm -hmm. audio. All right. Uh, welcome to Bible study. It, uh, interesting that uh, today is um, that was a request to do a. Now that we, we you know that we finished uh, Revelation. Oh. It is uh, showing on Facebook, even though it said it timed out. It's showing on Facebook four times. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Uh, well, it's a hey, technology. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and pray before I start talking and rambling on. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you and give your name glory and honor for being our God. Thank you for this opportunity to come together to look and explore different topics, but take it on the fact of your word. So God, help us to understand and discern what it is that we will read and understand and apply it to the things that we see. We ask these and all blessings in your son, Jesus Christ's name, that we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. So as you can see, I am representing uh, my alma mater, USC, as we stomped Notre Dame, as we stomped UCLA the week before, and we're going to stomp Utah on Friday night in Las Vegas that I should be at that game, but I will not. Uh, unless somebody want to pay for my room and, and a ticket to the game, then I'll be perfectly willing to go. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing. Okay. If you get to the tickets to the game, you can stay in the guest room. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, like they say, a uh, uh, closed mouth don't get fed, right? So anyway, uh, since we have completed uh, the book of Revelation uh, in nearly a year, uh, before we move on tonight, because the topic for tonight was something that was requested by uh, actually my frat brother. And I said, we'd go ahead and see if we could find some stuff in which I did find some things to, to go over. But before we got into that, I wanted to check in and see were there any residual or follow-up questions about uh, Revelation before we get into tonight. Mm -hmm. If not, it's no big deal. It's not, it's not like you, it's a requirement yeah. to have a question. If you don't, you don't. All right. So tonight then, this again was a, a request because uh, uh, I guess he was, my frat brother James had been acquainted with someone who had uh, requested or they had talked about the fact that they had believed in aliens. And so the question came up, uh, is there any biblical support for extraterrestrials or UFOs or anything of that nature? And so I found it to be interesting that he asked that question and thought we would take it to the word of God uh, to explore that uh, just a little, I guess, I don't want to say a lighthearted uh, look at it, because there are a lot of people who do believe and in the existence of extraterrestrials and UFOs. And there are people who have vivid uh, accounts of being abducted, uh, taken into uh, flying uh, aircraft, uh, people who have uh, claimed that they have seen specific aircraft uh, flying through the air, uh, whether it was at, at very fast speeds or very low speeds or hovering. 
uh, around. But nonetheless, you know, it's we can always find uh, just about everything that's about life in the Word of God. Now, so for tonight, this is going to require uh, for everybody to uh, whether you're reading scripture or not but it's going to require everybody to participate and express your thoughts and opinions uh, because that's how we're going to get to a better place of, of understanding of what it is that we're looking at and, and when we study God's word. So knowing that we know that there are people who believe in extraterrestrials, let me put the disclaimer out here right now. I have never believed in UFOs or extraterrestrials. So that's, that's where I'm going to come from, that position of that I do not accept and believe the existence of, of uh, intelligent life outside of the planet Earth. Now, uh, do anyone here uh, have any viewpoints about uh, intelligent, as they call it, intelligent life or extraterrestrials like ET and uh, the day the Earth stood still, <laughs> people coming, uh, uh, close encounters of the third kind. Does anyone have any opinions or thoughts about that? Yes. Well, <clears throat> my thought about that is, uh, and it goes back to one of these uh, times where either I heard or I read somewhere where they were talking about uh, uh, aliens or extraterrestrials, but you saw something strange in the sky that it was uh, had something to do with uh, biblical uh, events uh, uh, or more to the point, um, it being angels. Mm. Hmm. I've heard people uh, refer to say that uh, the, there's the, the potential that, that extraterrestrial beings are actually angels. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So I did hear that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? I, you know, guy across the street from me. Oh, yeah. He, he has all kind of high powered telescopes and all this proof that he's never shown me that it does exist. <laughs> so I see strange things in the sky, but I don't know if I believe it. I don't believe in. A, and then again, there might be. But really, I don't believe in that. Well, do you think that God just made one one earth? Yep. Something to think about. I do. That's a very interesting point, and we'll address that, Isaac. Uh, hmm. All right. So let's let's uh, let's go to the Word of God. Let's uh, have somebody pull up Genesis chapter one verse 26 through 27 anybody pull it up and then go ahead and read it 27 26 or 27 yeah genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 um uh then god said let us make man in our own image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all earth and uh, every, uh, and over every creeping thing that creeps onto the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay, so right off the bat, we know Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. And, we, and when we look at this, we, we get the, in, or at least in Genesis 1, the, the creation account. And this is where it is documented uh, that what God has created. And ultimately, the, the last and final creation was uh, human beings, you and I. Uh, and it's the, we see that in verse 26. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Let us have dominion. That means that we are going to have control. That means that everything that, that is not human, uh, this is where some of our, our people for, uh, 
people here in the United States have gotten it wrong. The Dominion is supposed to be over fish, birds, cattle, everything creeping on the earth. He doesn't say let them have dominion over each other. Uh, mm -hmm. So our our power are 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 the that where we can do do what we need, survive off of what we want, uh, survive off of how we need utilize it how we need to survive to have dominion over all these things that god had created now if we go back up in the genesis account and go all the way back up to gen uh, verse three in chapter one we see in the very first thing that god created and god said let there be light and there was light and he saw that the light was good right we see that all the time uh, and then we keep going on. Yeah. Then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the water. So we know the water had already existed because in the very first verse, I'm sorry, in the very second verse, it tells us that the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. What's deep besides waters? And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So essentially, we just got this big void that is just full for whatever reason water was there uh and so now we see that god had put firmament which is land in the midst of the waters and he goes through everything that he's going to create let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place god called the dry land earth and then we get to verse 11 and let the earth bring forth get grass and then the earth brings forth grass and then we get to verse 14 let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day and the night and let them be the signs and seasons and for days and years we're talking about the stars and the sun and let them you know go forth and so on and then god made two great lights the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and we know that to be the sun specifically and the moon this is what he created uh, and one was to rule over day, one was to rule over night. Then God said, let the waters abound in the abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth through it, the face of the firmament of the heavens. So we've, we've seen God has created uh, light. He's created land. He's created grass. He's created birds. And it says now we have these other things uh, uh, the, the uh, fish based on God created sea creatures and every living thing that moves, which the waters abounded according to their kind and the birds, of the air, according to their kind. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to its kind, cattle, cattle, creeping things and beasts of the earth, each according to its own kind. So you see, we're getting a, a detailed account, almost like a written ledger of everything that God has done. And anybody who has worked on a project, whether it's uh, at a church uh, on their job or whether you do it for, uh, uh, for um, your employment, when you're working on these projects, you have a detailed map and accounting of everything that's done, the steps, whether you're, when you plan it, this is what we need to do. And as you complete them, you check them off. This, this has been done. And if something needs to be added, you, you put it in there and say, hey, you know what? We realize we need to put do uh, X, Y, Z in here, or we need to rearrange it and move from uh, this from step seven to step three. And we need to move step four to step 12 or whatever the case may be. But it's a detailed account here of what we're seeing, what God has done. And so after he creates all of these things and we get down to the cattle and it takes us right there to verse 26, of which uh, Gwen read. Then God said, after all these things he created, let us create man in our own image. So here's the question that we have to ask if we're going to look at um, if aliens exist. If God created aliens, why didn't he mention them? Hmm. Oh, good question. Wow. Well, foreign, well, he didn't, uh, foreign beings? Uh, huh? e ETs. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Why didn't he mention them? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's detailing everything here. I mean, we, we got a, a very detailed, it took them uh, 25 verses to go through to explain all of creation before he gets to man. Mm -hmm. Everything that he does, let there be light. 
let there be firmament that comes up in the, in the midst of the water. Let, let the firmament produce green grass. Let their birds be filled in the sky. Let there be fish in the sea. Let there be cattle and creeping things upon the earth. All, I mean, he's given us a very detailed account. So that's the first question we have to look at. If, if he created aliens, if there is a such thing as aliens or extraterrestrials or, or, or intelligent life elsewhere, why didn't he say that? This is this is not this is not a quiz. This is let's let's hear an opinion. Well, can you hear me, really Ronald? Can, I can hear you now, Uncle Paul. Yeah, could it be because he only wanted to concern us with Earth itself? Interesting take. That that's a very that is a very interesting take that it. It's uh, that I might have created this, but it really isn't important for you to understand or really not a big factor for you or, or that you just simply need to focus on what you're doing here and don't worry about what's going on around the corner. That's interesting. Anybody else? I've heard before that, you know, aliens and things are from, are not from earth. That's why they're, considered aliens so and they're saying that god only created what's here on earth and not what's outside of earth wow okay uh i'll say this that's a very um that's a very limited view of the power of god uh, that was one of the questions i raised once before Mm. about all of the universes that we have okay you know? and, and and it's funny that you say that you say that because i was going to talk about the same thing let's, let's look at this from a scientific standpoint we know how that this universe in which we live has uh is very it has a very delicate balance you know the earth spins on an axis it's not sitting straight up it's slightly tilted for uh -huh. a reason and it spins on its axis whichever way it spins at a specific speed it, it can't go too fast it can't go too slow it, it spins on its axis at just the right speed and so we have the sun that is the perfect distance away from us that is going to keep us warm and sustain life not too close to us because it would scorch us not too far away because then we wouldn't feel it life couldn't exist it's a perfect balance and then we have the moon that existed in the right place because it keeps the waters and the, and the tide the gravity to the earth specifically and within this universe there's a certain amount of gravitational pull that holds everything together in order for life to exist on this rock that we call earth now it could be from a scientific standpoint that the rest of the planets that exist in our solar system exist to support everything that's going on or, or, or support this entire solar system to support life here and any other solar system that exists outside of ours or any universe that exists outside of ours is probably there scientifically to support life here because everything all works together. That's what Romans 8.28 says, right? For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. It's not just the good and bad things of life, but everything that God had created. All things are working for the good of those who love the Lord. Now, I'm just putting this out here because believe me, I'm no expert. I just did a little reading, a little studying, jotting down some notes. It's this, this is by no means at all to sit here and say, once we finish this tonight, that unequivocally, we're going to say without a shadow of a doubt that there, there is or there is no such thing of aliens or UFOs. You still are going to have to have your own opinion and use your, what's that word we used to talk about in Revelation, that you need to use your spiritual discernment. But let's let's go to Psalm eight. Let's see. Um, 
Sherelle, go to pull up Psalm 8, verses 3 through 6. <clears throat> when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you okay. have. Stop right there. So now we're getting into this place of which we were just talking about this idea of uh, the universe and all these things are out there. So David's writing, when I consider all these things that exist outside of earth, go ahead and continue, Sherelle. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him and the right. son of man? Stop, stop right there again. Now, if we just take this on, on its surface, David's asking a question of God. What is man that we should be, that you should be mindful of him, right? I mean, he's, he's asking this question. Who, who am I that's so important that I actually take up and occupy any part of God's mind. You know, we, we, we hear people talking about that, that, that uh, somebody you, you rent in space or people have uh, got space in your head rent free. Well, who, who am I that I actually occupy any space in God's thoughts, right? This, this is what David's asking. When I consider everything you've created, this, this whole beautiful thing, this earth, this universe, the sun, the stars, the sky, who am I? that you should even be thinking about me. He, he, he's saying, I'm a nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm a speck in this wondrous creation that you have made. Go ahead and finish that now, Sherelle. And the son of man that you visit him. Is that it? Did that go to verse three and four, right? No, six, go to six. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Okay, now, let me ask you all this question. When you hear that in Psalm 8, verses 3 through 6, what kind of thoughts do you hear, when, especially in Let's take five and six. And we heard verse three and four is when he, Paul, uh, uh, David is saying that to God, you know, who am I? Who, who am I should, that you would even be thinking about little old me? And he says, but you made man a little lower than the angels. Now we know the angels as, as we have spent an entire year studying Revelation. We know angels have uh, strength and power that we don't have as human beings. And David says, you've made man just a, a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So even though we're a little lower than the angels, we have glory and honor. Then he goes on to say, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. So let's, let's go all the way back to Genesis chapter one and keep this in mind. You know, if you, if you actually holding a Bible, uh, keep your, your finger there at Psalm 8, and let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, and it says right here in the beginning, at the very first verse, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then we go back to Psalm 8, uh, verse 6, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. What does that say to y'all? it says that he did not make any extraterrestrial things what he made we know about it, it kind of gives you that impression because if it, i went and pulled up just now dominion uh, so we can have a the real working definition of dominion not just having power and control and being able to do what you want but dominion means to have sovereignty <laughs> sovereignty you know that, that's you understand and when you talk about sovereignty you're talking about a different level of control kings have sovereignty god has is a sovereign god that's what we're talking about here and so god david says to god 
you have given mankind, you have given man this little insignificant speck in this wondrous thing that we call creation. You have given him dominion over the works of your hand that we as human beings have the dominion, sovereignty, control over everything that God has created. So is there something, would you, would, does that lend to believe that there's something more intelligent than us, more powerful than us besides the angels? Because David was very specific. You made us a little lower than the angels. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the definition in the Bible for dominion says supreme authority, absolute ownership. Absolute ownership. Hmm. This is what God has given us. So if, if we, if, if we look at this from, from just from this pure biblical point of view, that God created the heavens and the earth. And then David tells us here that God gave us dominion over all the works of God's hands but we're a little lower than the angels. We know about the angels. We're a little lower than the angels. So let me ask you this. I'm going to stray for a second. There's a theory that UFOs or intelligent life are actually fallen angels. I've heard that before as well. Now, but, where, well, but the question is, though, where do they go when they fall? Uh, well, they originally have uh, when God, you know, when we, we study this all year or part of the year that they God had cast Satan and all his his dominions out of heaven. Remember that when Jesus right. had quoted that, that he saw him when he fell like lightning out of heaven. I but, thought of that one. But what did Revelation tell us? Where are Satan and his demons? In Hades. That's right. So. And, and then there's a time when they are going to be released. So all I'm saying with this is that this idea that they are potentially fallen angels doesn't necessarily fly. All right. Now, we, we saw David said that uh, who's man? You know, I look at the sky. I see what you've done. Who am I to you even consider? Consider little old me, little old us. But you... Even with these little old people, you gave us glory and honor and dominion over everything that you created. And then we know from the creation account that we were the last thing that God created. Now. Okay, this might sound uh, kind of crazy or whatever, but who created all the other planets? That, that's part of the whole creation account. God created the heavens. They don't say just heaven says it created the heavens that's everything that fills the sky oh, okay that would include all the stars the mm -hmm. planets and the, and the rest of the universe the, 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 everything right there's like millions of universes so it stands a reason that there's a possibility that there are uh, 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 alternate worlds out there that god may have created uh, and more than just this earth here to see where where everything goes. That's that's, I mean, that's the way I look at it. No, no, no. I don't don't know all, all, all I'm doing is shrugging my shoulders. But, right, I'm, right. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong because I, <laughs> I I have nothing. I have no nothing to support whether you're I need right. To do I. I need right. To do I. But so, you just have to think about it though. Uh, you know, if we have this earth here. And we got millions of universes out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just stands the reason that it has to be another Earth out there. I mean, and I'm not saying that they're, uh, the people are like us. It could be whatever, you know. Uh, but it just seems like it has to be something out there. <laughs> well, yeah, it, I think they use a term called multiverses sometimes, that there's more than one universe. Yeah. So see, yeah. that's a theory. That yeah, that's a theory, but uh, that's a little bit uh, too too science fiction. 
uh, in terms of uh, multiverse where we have uh, uh, a, a, ourselves somewhere else in, in an alternate universe, you know, but to have um, all of these universes out here and they all are similar to our universe here, you know, and it stands a reason that they have to have at least one of those planets that's just like ours. Well, and yeah. well, does it's, that mean that it does that mean then that we don't believe the very first verse of the Bible in the beginning God created no, the heaven? Oh no 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 no! I'm I'm not saying that. I mean because God put us here, you know, and we got our our law to follow. Why can't He put someone else on another planet somewhere else with this same law to follow? Because he said he created the heavens and the earth. It, it didn't heavens. say he, he created more heavens than another earth or other earths to, to, for you to follow. It said he created the heavens and the earth. Well, look, let's look at it this way. Let's go back to, to when we were towards the end of Revelation. So at the end of Revelation or towards the end of Revelation, we had a situation where when God was done with earth, uh, it, he basically uncreated it, right? And then it said it created a new heaven and a new earth. Now, when he got rid of the old heaven and the, and the old earth and the whole of all creation, which was our universe, what does that do for all extra life out, out beyond our universe? The, the, were they not impacted? They should be. So I would why? say they probably would be. So why would God create them, not tell us about it, and then destroy them? Same reason he would uh, destroy this one here and not tell them about it. <laughs> them or us. <laughs> Are you an ET? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that, that possibility out there, you know, uh, but because see, because see, re remember, remember when we talk about uh, is is our God a God of love, mm -hmm. and, and is our God a God who will just willing or uh, willfully destroy life just to destroy life? No, 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 no. I mean, that's that's we we have we can find verse after verse after verse to support that God is not going to destroy life just to destroy life. Now there are going to be people there that, that you know, of course, I know somebody's going to text me and say, oh, you know, they're going to find this scripture. Yes, there have been innocent people who have died as a result of others that God's wrath is like, you know what, I'm done with this place. And I'm taking everybody out. Uh, he destroyed the earth with the flood with Noah. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for what everything that was going on there. So that you know, we and we know that when uh, Joshua and and the the children of Israel, when they had to fight various battles, they had been told that they were supposed to go in and destroy everybody, including women, children, and cattle. That nothing was supposed to survive. Yes, they destroyed thousands yes. of people at one time. Right. So and so it's not that he, we're, what we're saying is that he is not capable of destroying life but he is not going to destroy life without good reason and then ju yeah, just to destroy life whether it's if we are to accept there's an alternate or another planet or universe someplace that he would destroy this without telling us or notifying us about it or just because doesn't flow with the nature of the god we say we serve and believe in and so there see there here's where when we get into this, this is where we start having to decide how much are we going to start to lean on faith as opposed to what we believe is logic. Because some things that we believe is logic are not logical at all. It's just things that we have always accepted. You know, it's, we've accepted these things. And so that's, as far as we're concerned, that's factual when it's not necessarily a fact or logical. Um, now, one thing we do know, there have been some questionable things that existed on earth uh, through the creation of God. So let's go to 
Genesis chapter six, verse four. All right. Genesis chapter six, verse four. I'll go ahead and read it because I have it up. So this is uh, um, well after the Garden of Eden, well after the fall. And so we see here, uh, we go, we, uh, you know what I said, verse four. So I'm going to start at verse three. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120. You know, it's, we had had up until this time, men that were living five, six, seven, 800, almost 900 years. And it's like, you know what? I just, these people are too much to deal with. I can't have them here this long. 120 years is the max. Uh, there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Who are the giants? Question. Now, biblical scholars have referred to these as what they call the Nephilim, Nephilim, N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M, Nephilim, which translates the fallen ones. Hmm. which makes sense what? huh i just say what yeah the <laughs> fallen the fallen ones and just which makes sense because we just read what god said uh my spirit shall not strive with man forever i, can, I, I can't deal with these folks you know I, i'm trying to get from the very beginning i gave them everything they needed and everything they, they should have to want or everything they should desire and they, they just still is never good enough he, so he, these were the fallen ones. And this was this was right here at Noah's time, part of what caused the great flood, or if we're going to accept the word of God, believing that he caused a flood. So there was giants here in Nephilim as, as referred to. And then let's go to, uh, keep your finger in your Bible, uh, where we were at, June, at Genesis chapter six. Uh, let's go to, Numbers 13, we're going to read verse 28, Numbers 13, this is, uh, this is when the, the spies were sent out into Canaan, time Joshua was leading the children of Israel, we see at verse 28, it says, nevertheless, the people who dwell, the spies are coming back, they're giving the report, right, they're, they're telling them, now, so this is what I want you to understand here. What we read in Genesis 6 is pre-flood. Here we are in Numbers, post-flood. Verse 28, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Y'all know who Anak is supposed to be, right? I don't know. Okay, Anak is supposed to be... Uh, he was a giant. And so when they said he uh, kind of like what we saw in Genesis six and said there were giants, these descendants of Anak were his line. So these for your whole place full of giants. And if we drop down to verse 33, this is they're telling talking again. There we saw giants, the descendants of Anak who came from who did it come from? From giants. Giants. And we're like grasshoppers in our own sight. And we were, uh, and so we were in their sight. So now here's where the water's probably getting muddy for some folks. Uh, they're giants. And, and something about them is different from normal human beings. Because first off, we see if we, if, if you went back to Genesis, uh, God was mad. He said these dudes were basically having sex with earthly women or human women, which kind of gives you an idea that maybe these the sons are that the these giants are not normal. Right. And then, of course, it also kind of goes back to that. I see that in the biblical account of creation. Did anybody did did we miss that part in Genesis that said, uh, and on the, the eighth day, God created giants. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
So remember what I told you. I said, with this, we're not here to definitively answer the question. We're just looking at what the word of God points to. So here we have these, these giants that existed that were able to build cities, build fortified cities, which would kind of tell us they had some level of intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, we, we don't see dogs building cities. You don't see, even, even with our closest relative, the gorillas and apes and chimpanzees, they don't build cities and structures, right? Right. Right, right, right. But yet we have these giants that have built cities. It said, uh, let me go back up to verse 28. The people who dwell there are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. So not only did they have the capacity to build cities, they built fortified cities. Fortified is just simply saying these are not just regular, these are very strong cities. They have big, thick walls to protect them. They knew enough to build the city. They knew enough to protect the city. And they knew enough to strengthen the walls to protect the city. Yeah, fortified and large, very large. So here we have to kind of come back and may maybe some of us have to backtrack. Uh, if we, before the flood in Genesis, we see that there were giants. That was kind of what God got upset about, said that these, these dudes were, um, see Genesis, where were we here? No, that was uh, Genesis 6, 4. Yeah, there were, and there Six, were four, giants. Yeah with that in the earth on those days so here we are in, in the book of genesis the very five chapters after we read the, the creation account here we now have a place where giants existed but we don't have <laughs> giants in the creation account well i'm looking at the creation account again in genesis one and is it a possibility that the giants could be part of the <clears throat> in um where verse 24 where he says the living creatures of course and the creeping things because it said beast of the earth mm, of course but it, it but see this is where the the question what we can we can't ignore these are just not beasts because they have intelligence and this is what we're talking about when that question comes up are is there intelligent life outside or off you know outside of earth and these creatures that we're just seeing here in the Bible have intelligence. Not They're not beasts. Cows don't know how to build cities. They're, a cow, if it doesn't have a barn to go in, matter of fact, uh, is, is uh, Uncle Paul, did you grow up on a farm too? Well, my mom he's a, did. No. He's, he's a city Wait, boy. You a city boy. Yes, okay. I am city okay. boy. So I know my mom grew up on a farm. So if <laughs> you guys had cows and if you guys had a barn, now, if you didn't put the cows in the barn in the middle of a rainstorm, would the cow naturally go to the barn or do you have to lead them to the barn? It, it, depended. Them. it depended. Sometimes they had sense enough to get out of the rain, but most of the time they didn't. Right. And I know when mm -hmm. I lived in Texas, you know, when we first moved to Texas, we'd see there were a lot of the place where we lived in Little Elm, there was still a lot of farms and you're driving down the main highway and literally you'd see cows. I'd actually, we'd go for a walk uh, sometimes and there'd be cows right next to the sidewalk. And when you go into work in the middle of a rainstorm and it's 32 degrees outside, I see these cows just standing up in the middle of the pasture. Like hmm. you don't have a sense enough to take your butt to the barn where there's <laughs> out of the rain and some hay. Mm -hmm. but so there I, is something strange about the cows that way because i know when i was young who was it uncle robert would say see the cows know when to come in for the milking you didn't uh, have to go get them they would just come to the barn ah uh, yeah well see that was something they needed you know they needed the udders re relieved <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't want to get rid of that pressure um and and so but but still here we're talking about trying to draw a distinction between 
something that has intelligence and a beast as opposed to something that seems strange but has intelligence. So we don't have a biblical account of the creation of giants, but yet we have a biblical story that they are giants and we know that they were uh, intelligent. Let's go to uh, somebody pull up Luke chapter 17, verse 26, and, and read that as soon as you get it. Luke chapter 17, verse 26. Yeah, uh, verse 26? Yeah. All right, I'm reading from the NLT version. Mm -hmm. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered the boat and the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay. So it, basically, it, he's basically saying there, we're going to have a time like Noah. And so what was the problem or what was going on that, that God had a problem with? The existence of these giants doing things with human beings. As a matter of fact, uh, if we go to, back to Genesis chapter six and read verse five, it says, then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was evil continually. <laughs> And that's what caused the flood. And Luke is just further saying this. So we got the giants. We got these giant cities that happened to post-flood. Uh, let me see. I want to look up this other scripture real quick. It was uh, Acts. Let me see. Acts 17. Ah, I spelled it wrong. Let me pull. And I still spelled it wrong again. There we go. Acts 17, verse 26. And so now let, let's see. This is Acts. Paul is writing this to the church. Uh, Acts 17, verse 26. Uh, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed time and the boundaries of their dwellings. So what are the boundaries of our dwellings? Boundaries. Um, tell you where you go, how far you go, you, you know, respect my boundaries. Yeah, well, it's a limit. It's, mm -hmm. it's essentially a limit. So mm -hmm. what uh, Paul is saying, um, let me go back to that. He made from one, one blood, every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth. That's our boundary to dwell on the face of the earth, which is kind of interesting that we have science scientists that are out there trying to look at how we can potentially colonize other planets. Uh, if we if we're taking scripture on face value here, our boundary is earth. There is no way to colonize another planet and successfully live. You could probably send some people there six months at a time or three months at a time and then send them back. But according to the Bible, it doesn't look like you'll be able to sit there and, and actually send people and, and 30 years from now say, hey, we got to, I, I decided I'm going to leave Earth and go relocate to. In, in other words, saying they found a new Earth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he's saying here that we're bound to this, this is our boundary and that our pre appointed time and the boundaries of our dwelling. Uh, so if God has preordained this time and has preordained our boundary does that mean that there are other people someplace else or is the boundary here Anybody? The boundary is here. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. Uh, because if, uh, if, if uh, as you were saying about, uh, say, for instance, uh, scientists want to take you to Mars, I, I don't feel like 
you may be able to go to Mars, but you can't go to Mars and that's, that's where your life and you raise your family and your children and your grandchildren and all that. You may be able to go there for that certain period of time, but you're going to have to bring your hat back to earth. You, you know what? <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's look at Psalm. Everybody pull up Psalm 115. And then we'll get to verse 16. Psalm 115 verse 16. Everybody there? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read it, somebody. They have First, ears. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they no, that, do that, not that, that's not That's not the right verse. Oh, he said 16. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry. The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's but the earth he has given to the children of men. But what has been given to the children of men? Earth. Heavens, I mean. <laughs> no, that was it. Oh, the, that's the, the earth, yeah. The earth, mm -hmm. they are, yeah. the earth has been given to the, ch the children of men. That's, that's mm -hmm. us. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. Mm -hmm. It's his, but earth is ours. So now we know that God had, had there were some giants that were here. Uh, we don't know how the giants got here. Biblical scholars believe that there were some angels that decided, uh, you know what, these, these honeys that are down here are looking pretty good to me. So, you know, I want this is what I want my life to be. And that's how we got the Nephilim and these giants, because the angels are, when we read about the angels, or at least some of the angels we saw in the book of Revelation, they're not normal looking creatures, right? <laughs> they're, they're certainly strange. I mean, remember the ones that had the multi heads and the four sets of wings and, and all these things, they're, they're not normal looking creatures uh, that God had created. So when you got these normal creatures, uh, consummating sexual relationships with human beings, it, it's creating this hybrid, if you will, uh, creation, which is probably where Anak and his descendants came from, this hybrid creature. Now, we know we had the flood. How did we get them here again? I don't have that answer. But we do know that God says the heavens are his, the earths are humans. We do know that God had said that not only are the heavens his, but he has given us dominion over the works of his hands. And we saw in the Old Testament at the very beginning that God created the heavens and the earth, and he gave us dominions over the creation of his hands. So we've seen certain, a certain amount of things, and we've seen the, these scriptures that we have read so far, and there are actually some very fascinating uh, uh, documents that uh, different people have written discussing this, but I could tell you that uh, uh, these, I, I've really looked into three Bible scholars, and all three say there are no such thing as extraterrestrials and aliens, that there are no other people living in universes away from us, that life is only able to be sustained here specifically for the work that God had done and that everything else that exists exists only for this to keep it as uh keep this this solar system this universe this this uh uh milky way in the condition that it is to support the life that we have here on earth And we saw that, we just saw in, in Acts 17, that the heavens and the earth are God's, but the earth is our predetermined boundary. So we go back to this, the, the original question. If God had created aliens, why didn't he talk about it? And he tells us a lot of stuff. 
right? What if they got their own Bibles? <laughs> Why would God create a Bible for us and a Bible for somebody else? Well, I mean, it could be the same thing, but maybe different language. Because no. they may look different. I'm, I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. I, I, I get you, and uh, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, that when we, <laughs> when we look at this. <laughs> You have to look at it again from a perspective of the God, the nature of the God that we know and serve. Is this something that he would do? Do you see him creating an entire different race, uh, people on a whole different planet, and a whole different solar system, uh, and giving them prophets to speak to them, to tell them essentially the same story he tells us? Possibly. Uh, now, I, I'm just, again, I can just tell you from, from a biblical standpoint, and I've, I've said it uh, on more than one occasion, and I will continue to say it. The only thing that I go by when people tell me stuff is if you could show it to me in the Bible, I'll roll with it. If I don't see it in the Bible, I can't accept it. That's just me. That can, that's, that's not everybody's going to go that way, and I, and I can accept that. So just the same, if, if you want to believe, and I'm not saying you, Isaac, I'm saying you collectively, anybody mm -hmm. who's watching oh, I, I get it. wants to believe that there are aliens out there, you go right ahead and believe that there are aliens out there. I'm telling you for me, I don't accept that. I don't believe it. And then what I see in the word of God does not lend to this idea that he would, uh, that they, they would exist out there for me now um anybody else have any or isaac anybody have any more thoughts or questions <laughs> no i do ronald go for it here's the one thing that kind of bothers me though in fact me and a guy at work got into it one night about that Siegfried. well bud i think bud was yeah. there too <laughs> but <laughs> anyway the, the <laughs> conversation came up about dinosaurs. Oh. Why are dinosaurs mentioned in the Bible? Why are they? Why are not, they not mentioned? Oh, well, actually, I, let me hold, hold on a second. Uh, I had uh, I had a, dang it, I had a, a thing that I had pulled up that I wanted to see uh, uh, uh hold on bear with me there i i god i, I wish i remember which one was that um Thank you. You looking for a scripture with, with dinosaurs? No, no, no. I was looking oh. for something else. Uh, it was, mm. it was. Um, oh, let's see. Why couldn't the dinosaurs be a part of the uh, living creatures according to its kind? Ah, uh, well, they could. But I, I want to uh, find some of this thing specifically. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I think I got it. Okay, so if we go to the book of Job, Job has, you know, in his infinite wisdom, thinking, you know, he has the audacity to question God and God is challenging him. 
and and we're in Job 40, chapter 40, and he says in verse 14, look now at the behemoth, which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox. See how now his strength in his hips and the power in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like the beams of bronze, his ribs like bars of iron. He is the first of the ways of God. Only he who made him can bring uh, near his sword. So here he's, he's talking about this great creature, uh, this uh, behemoth. Uh, let me pull this little section here. Uh, right. So it, it had the little reference number. It's This is unknown, but when we this is the closest that we're going to find in scripture that refers mm -hmm. to something that would be it kind of would be like a dinosaur a, a big a behemoth is clearly a exceptionally large <laughs> animal uh and so uh we don't have them that exist anymore we do know that there were a lot of of dinosaurs that fit that category of behemoth that were uh uh herbivores that they ate grass leaves and and uh, seeds they didn't eat uh meat and so god is telling job look i created these things here they were here but then once you get to the flood uh you couldn't put this uh these big things on that ark uh you know the ark was designed to hold what it held and certain things couldn't go uh and a behemoth is uh one of them now we do know from a scientific point of view that they existed here on the planet because we find their remains and the fossilized bones. But there, there we hear and see in Job that it speaks of it, that, the, you know, I created this animal and he, he walked the earth and he ate, ate grass. That's the closest we're going to see to a biblical account to a dinosaur. So they were vegetarian? <laughs> Certain uh, dinosaurs were, not all. I mean, we know yeah. that they talk about a T-Rex was not a vegetarian. Um. Tell you, Google works wonders. It, it's amazing that you have biblical scholars before Google. That tells you you really had to study and know the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> now, Google, yeah. you could just do a search and it'll tell, point you right where you need to go. Uh, yeah, so that's that's essentially it. There's another there's another scripture. Uh, I, I couldn't find that one uh, that does has a similar theme about some really large creature and then of course we know through uh the story of jonah that there was a large uh, oh, uh swallowed him alive swallowed him alive right that animal that swallowed him alive and then spit him up uh it on the on the shores of nineveh where he didn't want to go in the first place and ended up there anyway uh so those that this it, the, the two that i know for certain what we just read and the jonah account and I believe there's a third one uh, that I just can't recall at this point in time that does talk about these exceptionally large uh, creatures that existed and roamed the earth. Okay. So what, where does everybody stand right now? Did, did uh, has there been any has your your curiosity been peaked more than it was before? Or are you firm where you were, or now you're swaying? Mm -hmm. Good question. You know, in Job forty one, it speaks of uh, a Leviathan. That's the one and I we know. To look and at. and I, I thought, yeah, and we know that Leviathan was some giant fish like or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> anybody well, well you know uh, it seem like all of uh, chapter 40 and 41 of Job seem like you're speaking of uh, giant something so, uh huh you know well because God has to remind Job that of, of, his, of his sovereignty 
you know, you're sitting here questioning me. You don't, you, you're forgetting who I am and what I've done. Yeah, and it says that he is the first of the ways of God. Mm -hmm. So now maybe they they were the first. Uh, uh, never mind. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to go off in the deep end. <laughs> deeper, deeper into that rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. Well, before we wrap up, so today is November 30th, which is perfect. So that means what we're going to do now, this, this is our uh, uh, last Bible study for 2022. Uh, we'll resume in 2023, February of 2023 uh, to uh, start off uh, 2023 Bible study on faith, uh, growing, develop, uh, or developing and growing faith. Uh, that's going to, to last I would imagine nowhere near as long as Revelation, but I think we're going to be about three months of going into that. Uh, and the reason why we have to take this hiatus is because uh, I can't find uh, an appropriate Bible study that exists at this time about growing faith. So I have to create it. Uh, I have to do some study, some reading, and, and put the Bible study together for myself uh, so that we'll have it and be able to go from there uh, from a biblical standpoint of what it means. Understand First, knowing what faith is. Uh, know, two, knowing what it means to have faith. Uh, three, how to begin to uh, start using faith and then growing deeper in faith. And so that's where we're going to go. Uh, with that in starting in February of 2023. And, uh, or as you say, that's, that's where we're going. If it's God's will, that's where we'll be going. Uh, and so I want this to be uh, a, a growth opportunity for everybody to, to really take and understand what it means and what God is, is looking for us, because we know that the word of God says for without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if we are striving to please God, then a, a, a key component of that is faith. And so when we, I think what we're going to also find is that we have more faith than what we actually believe. The question is going to be, are we willing to stand on our faith? And that's going to be the, the make or break for us as believers. Are you really, really willing to stand on your faith and trust God when everything looks dire because it's easy to talk about it i that's I, I i said that for years how how much important it is to trust god until i actually had to trust god and that's when it makes all the difference in the world will you trust him when you actually have to trust him when you don't feel like you're trusting him no big deal money's in the bank uh feeling pretty good uh physically don't have to go to the doctor, nobody's sick, no, no controversy, no trouble. Everybody's feeling, nobody's even thinking about God. But then when you sit here and the doctor tells you what you don't want to hear, or your company goes under, or you're suddenly looking at your bank account and you're looking at, I'm on my last dime and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Are you going to trust God before you take matters into your own hands? And that's a problem that a lot of us as believers have, not trusting in God. So that's what we're going to do, uh, at least a good three or four months. And we're going to put this together, uh, looking at this basis, where we are, how to plant those seeds of faith, and ultimately, in the end, to please God, because that's what he says. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So uh, this is it for 2022. We'll see you in 2023 if it is God's will. And uh, again, you know, you can always, everybody knows who I am and how to reach out to me. You can call me, uh, text me or whatever. If you have any questions, I will be here to answer them as we continue to put together this new Bible study for 2023. So any questions before we pray? Yeah. Is there going to be a new book, a daily book for? Um... Uh, actual, you know, in a, a daily Bible reading book? Yeah. Oh, no, I have not. Uh, uh, no, it, I actually, I thought about it, but no, I think uh, two years of us going through it, 
you got two books. Uh, it, it's kind of like a optional now, like, okay, if you, you, you know, if you've gotten into the habit, just then reread it again, just pick it up and start reading. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's pray. Uh, God, our father, we thank you uh, for this time. Uh, we pray that we have discovered some truths uh, to your word. We pray that some seeds were planted in our spirit that will cause us to do deeper dive into your word that will look more closely into the things of what we've seen in this world, things that we have questioned and look to you more deeply and closely to see what you say, God, because your word is the final say on all matters. It doesn't matter what the scientists say. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what my grandmother said. It only matters what you say. So God, be with us, speak to us, and lead us so that we can find out what it is that you have for us to do. Now, as we leave this place and to come apart or leave this place and to reconvene in 2023, we we pray, pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will be with us, that it will guide us, it will protect us, that your will will be with us, that we can come back together as a spiritual family, as a church family, and begin to understand what it means to grow our faith. So not only do we have it, but it will be strong that no matter what happens, no matter what we go through, that we'll still be able to stand on the word of God that says that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So Father, we ask that you touch each and every person, whatever it is that they're going through, that your spirit will be with them, that it will be in their homes, it'll be in their jobs, it'll be at their doctor's office, it'll be with them in their car, that they would have your peace and your joy that will be with them. Help them, Lord, to live from the inside out and not be influenced from what goes on in the world, but let the spirit that is inside of them change the temperament and the temperature of the room in which they walk, that they will be spirit-filled, spirit-led people doing your will as you would have us to do. We love you, Lord, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So this week, uh, as I've already been telling you, this Sunday is Founders Day for my fraternity. Uh, we're having the brothers that are going to be joining us to worship. The sermon on Sunday is not just for alphas. It is for everybody. It is the trap of good enough. The <laughs> trap of good enough. And y'all know we have all been there when you do something and you say, ah, that's just good enough. It is a trap, and it is a trap when we try to do that for God, and we're going to talk about how to avoid that trap of good enough and emerge to be better and to believe God for the good that he has for us. So if you can't be with us in person, I would encourage you to make sure you watch us online on Sunday, and then if you can't watch us online on Sunday because you're going to be at your church, you better tune in and uh, hit that uh, YouTube channel and stream it later because you are not going to want to miss that particular message. This is something I've been working on for a while. So uh, this one is going to uh, uh, hopefully change some lives. The, the trap of good enough. We want to avoid that at all costs. Y'all have a great uh, evening, uh, great holiday season. Holidays, yeah. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. And if God says the same, I will see you in February 2023 doing this Bible study on faith. Y'all be blessed. Uh, love each other. Pray for each other and continue to lift each other up as we go along. Amen. 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 Y'all be blessed. Good night, Good night, guys. Good night.